Hello friends, this video on biological classification part 11 is brought to you by exactfear.com. No more fear from exam. To the next group that is dianoflagellates. So what do you understand from this name dianoflagellates? I am sure you would have understood the second part flagellate that means something with flagella that is flagellate. Di means two. So something with two flagella. So it might be something like that. Okay, let's see what it is. These are protists with flagella. Mostly two, not always two, but most of the times they have two flagella. That is why they are called dinoflagellates. Now, the word di means two, but at the same time, if you look at this entire word, that is diano. This word means whirling. Whirling, and this is flagella. So you can see that organisms with whirling flagella, that means the flagella which keeps moving. Again, this is one of the largest group of marine eukaryotes after diatoms. So if you talk about marine eukaryotes, diatoms form the largest. They are the main producers in oceans. But next to diatoms are the dinoflagellates. They are neither plant nor animal like protists. So they do not resemble either plants or animals. So talking about their structure, they contain chlorophyll, carotene and several group of xanthophylls and that is why even they are colored. So they can be in a variety of colors depending upon the pigment which is present. So like for example carotene can give it a red color, a specific type of xanthophyll can give it a yellow color or uh, Chlorophyll can give it a green color. So it can be yellow, green, red, blue, brown, depending upon the pigment which is present in it. Complex cell covering, cortex is present. So that means the cell is well protected from outside due to the presence of cortex. Light sensitive organelle eye spot is found in some of them. So a structure similar to eye which can sense light is present. Erythropsidium is said to have the smallest known eye. So this is the dinoflagellate which has the smallest eye spot. So when, even here if you look at the cell wall, the cell wall is quite strong, rigid with the cortex present there. Steep cellulose plates are also present on the cell wall. Now talking about the habitat, they are also aquatic, could be freshwater or marine. Talking about nutrition, they are a combination of photosynthetic plus prey ingestion. Photosynthetic because some might contain chlorophyll, but it is not necessary that all dinoflagellates will contain chlorophyll. So there, are, there might be some which do not contain chlorophyll. So they can have their food in the form of prey, that means ingestion of prey. So some examples of uh, dinoflagellates would be udinium. So here you can see in this picture. There is a fish which you can see. If you observe it very closely, you see some yellow spots on the fish. So these yellow spots, spots are nothing but udinium dinoflagellates. So this fish is infected by udinium. This appears as golden colored dust over the body of the fish. Noctiluca. So these noctiluca, here you see some bluish colored uh, thing which you observe on the surface of water. They are nothing but dinoflagellates called noctiluca. So these noctiluca are big enough that they feed on fish eggs. So they directly feed on fish eggs as well. Now many photosynthetic dinoflagellates are also symbiotic. That means they exist in a symbiotic relationship with some other organism. They live inside hosts. What can be those hosts? Those hosts can be corals, they can be flatworms, they can be jellyfish. So they can be anything. So in that case, they both get benefited. The fish also gets some benefit due to the presence of the dinoflagellates and the dinoflagellates gets its nutrition from that fish. And the last one that is reproduction. Here both sexual and asexual modes are seen but mostly asexual by means of fission. So I will not discuss fission again because fission, the concept of fission will always remain the same. The cell will elongate and the parent will split into two daughter organisms. 
sexual mode seen only in some of them. So even in dinoflagellates, the sexual mode of reproduction is seen limitedly. I mean, it is not very common. So these are some of the important characteristics of dinoflagellates. Dino, that is whirling flagellates, that is flagella. So when you talk about dinoflagellates, these organisms, okay, one important, another thing which I missed to tell is, as, as I told in the very first point that mostly they have two flagella. So these two flagella are not exactly similar to each other. The two flagella are dissimilar. They are ribbon-like structures. So one is a transverse flagellum with wavy ribbon and the other one is a longitudinal flagellum. So this transverse flagellum, so here we can say they have one transverse flagellum and they have one longitudinal flagellum. So this transverse and longitudinal flagellum together results in the forward movement as well as the turning movement of the dinoflagellates. Because of the presence of these two flagellum, they can move forward as well as they can take turns. Let us now talk about red tide. That is another important concept. Red tide is a kind of algal bloom. What is algal bloom? Bloom means, bloom is nothing but some boom. That means increase in something. So what is algal bloom? A sudden increase in the population of algae is known as algal bloom. What is red tide? It is also sudden increase in the population of a specific type of algae which makes everything red. The coloration of the sea into red due to rapid multiplication of the red dinoflagellates, gonicolux, is termed as red tide. So it is because of this is also an algal bloom, but it is algal bloom of a specific type of dinoflagellates which are red in color. Now, if the number of the red dinoflagellates increase so much, what happens? There are too many red colored organisms in the sea. As a result, the water looks red and that is known as a red tide. So, what is the name of this red dinoflagellates? Gonicolux. So this is how a red tide looks like. So here if you see, the water was blue in color. But due to the rapid increase in population of uh, the goniolux, this portion of the sea looks red. So that is known as a red tide. Now this red tide, I mean during the process of this multiplication, there are some chemicals which get released, which are extremely harmful for the survival of other aquatic life. So due to this red tide, all other organisms living in the sea, maybe other fishes, big or small, they might die because of this poisonous chemicals which are produced during the process of formation of this red tide. Right? Okay, so we are done with dinoflagellates. So what did we learn about dinoflagellates? They have whirling flagella, they have two flagella, one transverse, one longitudinal. They both together help in their forward motion as well as turning motion. We also spoke about the variety of colors in which they can be there and we talked about their nutrition and red diet. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.